we've designed a super cylinder! What if I told you, with the right design and setup, you could consistently generate hot water at 400 to 550% efficiency, or COP if you have a heat pump, and dramatically increase your boiler efficiency if using a condensing boiler? This video is about making the world's most efficient hot water cylinder, but that doesn't necessarily mean you need a new one. You could massively increase your hot water efficiencies with your current cylinder, by simply adjusting just a couple of settings. This secret hot water cylinder setup and design is exactly what I have at home and regularly gets me over 500% efficiency, even when it's cold outside. Since installing my cylinder, I've made a couple of amendments and I'm ready to show you exactly how you can save this much energy, running costs and CO2. And in this video, I'm gonna reveal some truly industry changing stuff. And by the end of it, you may be asking, why don't we just sell these designs for ourselves? Our goal at HeatGeek isn't to make the most amount of money possible from our audience. The goal is to ultimately decarbonize home heating. To us, that means making the barriers to entry on low carbon heating as low as possible by making innovative ideas available to the public. We've already been teaching all of this stuff in much more detail on our online training course since 2020, but now it's time to tell the public exactly how we generate this unbelievably high efficient hot water. To get hot water efficiencies of up to 500% efficient and over, you always need to focus on two things. One, cylinder design, or if you already have a cylinder, adjusting your control settings. And in this video, we're gonna focus on how to create a super cylinder. If you already have a hot water cylinder, once you finish this video, check out the counterpart to this video, which will guide you through your ultimate hot water efficiency settings. As there'll be a ton of improvements you can make to increase efficiency, but the information here will absolutely help you too. This super cylinder allows you to have all the hot water you need while using much less electricity or gas. Because heat pumps and high efficiency boilers don't like high temperatures, minimizing the required temperature to heat up the cylinder, if done right, will dramatically increase their efficiency. The two main things to focus on in cylinder design specifically are distortion and stratification. Now I could list some basic rules to follow and make this video very simple, but I want to tell you the underlying theory so that you can adapt the knowledge for any scenario. Don't worry, I'll make it super simple. Now typically the water in your hot water cylinder is not the same water that goes through your heat pump. If it was, the flow temperature required by your heat pump would already be the lowest possible. I.e. if you wanted 50 degrees hot water, your flow temperature from your boiler or heat pump would only need to be 50 degrees and give you the highest efficiency you could possibly get. But to prevent you from bathing in dirty radiator water and protect your radiators from rusting in fresh water, these two waters need to be separated by a heat exchanger. Traditional cylinders use a coil type heat exchanger, which is basically a coil of pipe for heated water to pass through, which in turn heats up the domestic hot water in the cylinder. Because these two different waters are separated by the walls of this heat exchanger, we need our heat source side of the heat exchanger to be hotter than the other side in order to drive heat energy over. And this temperature difference between the water temperature from the heat source and the water temperature of the store is called distortion. The further these temperatures are apart, the hotter the heat source has to run and the less efficient it is. So our first main focus in both cylinder design and cylinder controls is on how to minimize distortion. The first thing to do is simply to make our heat exchanger more powerful or in engineering terms, increase its overall heat transfer coefficient. By making your heat exchanger more powerful, we can choose to heat the cylinder much faster or heat it in the same amount of time with a much lower temperature differential, meaning our heat source can run cooler, increase its efficiency, and save energy. Well, assuming we're using copper or stainless steel coils, the first thing we can do is increase the heat exchanger's surface area. And if we increase the amount of heat exchanger surface area, it gives more opportunity for the heat to get from one side to the other. Now, there's a few ways you can do this. For example, you can add plates or rings to the coil, much like the convectors on the back of a convector radiator. You could add ribs to the coil, 
or you can make the coil longer or wider. However, there are a few consequences. If making it too long, you could make the water path too restrictive for the pump, which could mean the pump struggles to circulate the coil, in turn causing the heat pump to hold back its energy input or jump to a higher flow temperature quicker. If the bore is too wide, you could reduce the velocity of the water too much, which creates an insulating boundary layer around the edge, which lowers your heat transfer again. Conversely, a narrower bore will increase turbulence and gives better heat exchange, but at the cost of exponential more hard work for the pump to get water through the coil, leading to our first problem again. So this requires a bit of balance. Once we get the heat exchanger to a certain size or potential power, the heat source will no longer be able to dictate the flow temperature at which it heats the store. What I mean is the heat source won't be able to hit its target flow temperature because the heat is sucked out of the heat exchanger at a higher rate than the amount of energy being put back in. This doesn't mean the hot water won't heat. In fact, it will heat faster because the tank will be absorbing the full output of the heat source. It's just that the heat is being taken from the source so efficiently, heat source can't keep up, and so we can use lower flow temperatures. The point at which the heat exchanger takes more energy than the heat source can produce, and so therefore intrinsically keeps the flow temperature lower, is called the heat source saturation point. This often means the return temperature from the cylinder is at or even below the measured store temperature. Another option you have instead of a coil is to plate load your cylinder. This is an external heat exchanger that uses lots of little plates to maximize the contact area of the water in the smallest possible space and also gives you the opportunity to take cold water from the cold feed to ensure the coolest water is used. A full breakdown on the complexities of plate loading and how to maximize its efficiency and the heat source saturation point are all taught in our training in much more detail over on heatgeek.com. The next thing we want to do to minimize the required flow temperature from our heat source is to make the other side of the heat exchanger as cool as possible by making use of stratification. That's where heavier, cooler water sits underneath lighter, warmer water. By locating our coil in the coolest water available, we will drag down the flow temperature even further below the heat source saturation point. To maximize the stratification effect of a cylinder, there's a few things we can do. First off, we need to slow down the velocity of the incoming cold water into the bottom of the tank right down. If it fills the tank too fast, it will stir the tank up and remove any stratification effect. Slowing the velocity right down means using larger bore pipe. Our aim is to define this stratification line or thermocline as much as possible. You can also direct the cold water down into the lowest part of the tank. This will maximize the temperature differential and ensure the thermocline is more defined and stays longer. Advanced tip, this also applies to secondary hot water tappings too. Anything that may stir up the tank should be low velocity and wide bore to slow the water down before entering the tank and should be mid to low down as the water shouldn't come back particularly hot if correctly controlled. Next is the size and shape of the cylinder itself. We should always try to select a narrower, taller cylinder. By using a taller and slimmer, rather than shorter and wider cylinder, we help the stratification effect by reducing the contact area between the hot and cold sections, keeping the thermocline effect for much longer. We then want as much of the coil heat exchanger down in this lower section as possible. Remember, this will be much cooler than the rest of the store. If you're measuring 40 degrees store temperature halfway up the cylinder, down here could be as low as nine degrees. Sitting coils right down as low as possible here will maximize the surface area and temperature difference, which will in turn drag down the flow temperature even further. Additionally, to absolutely maximize hot water efficiency, we want to fit the biggest cylinder we could possibly fit. There's two reasons for this. First of all, if our cylinder is small, we may have to store the water hotter or we may risk running out of hot water. By storing it hotter, you effectively have a larger store because you cool that hot water back down later at the point of use. By maximizing the cylinder size, you can heat to a lower temperature and have enough capacity not to run out. Bacterial growth like Legionella is something to be aware of here, but we have a solution for this in our hot water control video, which you can find the link for in the description. The second reason is that it gives you much more storage capacity if you want to utilize variable rate tariffs or if you have access to free solar energy. My cylinder is 300 liters, for example. 
I keep it around about 45 degrees, but if I want to, I can heat it up to 70 degrees, which my heat pump can do at around about 300% efficiency and literally double the amount of energy stored in times of cheap or free power if I want it. So to summarize so far, to make the super cylinder, we want to maximize the heat exchanger surface area, ensure the right velocity and pressure loss across the heat exchanger, maximize the bore of any tappings and ensure they're the right height to maintain maximum stratification, place the heat exchanger as low as possible, use taller, slimmer cylinders and use larger cylinders. We followed these exact principles with my cylinder that was installed back in June 2023. Since then, using third-party monitoring called Open Energy Monitor, and I'm glad to reveal that my average efficiency for hot water over the year so far is 460% efficient, as you can see here. However, I'm still making refinements all the time, so this is likely to increase. If you don't want to go through all of this and you'd like to purchase one of these cylinders right off the shelf right now, you can order one from Newark Cylinders, who made the cylinder in my house back in June, and are manufacturing these for heat geeks up and down the country who are now installing these at ever-increasing efficiencies. Just simply ask them for a Heat Geek series cylinder. Please be aware that we don't make any money from this. Like I said at the beginning of the video, our goal is to decarbonize homes not make money by selling cylinders. We'd also like to invite any manufacturers who are watching this video to take our design, improve on it, and make another option available for purchase. Our goal is simply to empower competition and raise standards with education. Now there's a couple more things to finish off. Using a super cylinder like this can get you pretty close to super efficiency, but you'll never maximize the efficiency of your hot water if you don't set the controls up right. We'll put a link in the description for the second part of this video, which is how to maximize hot water efficiency with controls. The last thing you need to do as a customer is to make sure that you use a fully trained engineer, such as a heat geek. All heat geeks have undergone our award-winning training, which goes into all of this into much, much more depth and detail and can implement the underlying theory in the best way to maximize efficiency. And if the work is completed through us, performance as well as the workmanship is also now guaranteed. Just grab a digital heat loss by popping your postcode into our Heat Geek calculator on heatgeek.com for an instant result. This will also show you a load of other information about how you could upgrade your home too. I wanna hear from you. What are your thoughts? Please pop a comment in the comment section, like the video and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.